This week, I am actually out of town with Reese for a bit of R&R, &R. but before I left, I actually wanted to pre-record this video that takes a look at some of the more recent claims made by Intel's AXG marketing people. Uh, this video was actually intended to come out last week, but new RDNA 3 information made me push it back, and I'm actually happy it did. Last week, I was really getting tired of covering this mess. Having said that, I am covering it again because there's just new stuff. Don't worry, I'm not going to be beating any dead horses in this video. I'm simply going to be beating the latest stallions of stupidity that Intel keeps letting out of their stable because they're new, they're different, and I think they give us more context as to what's actually going on behind the scenes at AXG. Now, my research for this video got spurred along when I saw an article from Video Cards that cheekily referenced my ARC story information in regards to if that's what possibly Intel was showing off last week, which, no, the roadmap I have for the ARC story shows that happening in September, not August, which, now that I think about it, that Intel story might actually come out right around when AMD is planning to launch Zen 4 Raphael, which I recently confirmed is September 27th, as some other people have said, and I actually, I believe I'm the first to confirm B650 launches October 10th, possibly exactly one week before Raptor Lake launches. But we're getting off subject. No, what was shown off was not an ARC story last week. What was shown off was a pretty boilerplate teaser at the performance of an upcoming graphics product. In this case, Intel's A750, through a series of benchmark numbers, was claiming it would be an RTX 3060 competitor. And, well, to be honest, we're just going to have to wait for reviews to be sure if those numbers aren't misleading. And I actually, later in this video, have some quotes from a few of my sources that suggest they might be. But... The majority of what I actually want to talk about today is even if we were to use Intel's own numbers about A750 performance, they contradict some recent statements by Ryan Shrout and Tom Peterson in recent interviews. And actually, in some recent interviews from just a month ago, we can already see some claims that I think have been flying under the radar that completely do not make sense. And, and really, that's what I want to talk about today. A little bit of an update on what my sources are telling me about Alchemist's launch, um, and just deconstructing some of Intel's own statements and numbers to show why I don't think what they're saying publicly is really what's going on behind the scenes from a company that to this day cannot tell ARC sweepstakes winners when they will be getting a graphics card offering them an i7 instead with still no estimate to launch i think i know what's going on but first an ad from a sponsor do you know everything well congratulations if you do because i don't and neither does my dog reesey here honestly i don't think she really knows anything she doesn't even seem to get why i put sunglasses on her at the veterinarian's office the other day it's because she's cute uh, we could probably both use a little bit of knowledge from Brilliant. Today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform built to make you see math and science in a new way that's fun. Brilliant uses hands-on courses that have been tailored to keep you engaged so you can learn STEM courses in an effective way. Whether you want to do things like brush up on everyday mathematics you're getting a little rusty in, or learn the fundamentals of computer science for the first time, Brilliant can keep you sharp or help you develop new skills for your career. And best of all, Brilliant is free to start and it's waiting for you. Join over 11 million people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for Moore's Law is Dead listeners. Head to brilliant.org slash Moore's Law is Dead to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will also get a 20% off an annual membership. Clicking on this link really helps the channel. It also helps you by costing nothing. Get started for free at Brilliant today. Okay then, before I get into the public contradictions, I actually want to give you guys a bit of an update on what I'm hearing behind the scenes about Alchemist. These quotes were rounded up over the course of late last week and early this week, and they suggest that Intel still doesn't really know what's going on. One source tells me that months ago, he was promised professional art cards to start testing, and to this day, he still doesn't really have any estimate for when he's going to get them, and he basically doesn't expect to get them for months. Another source tells me that right now, 
with an A770 card he has his hands on and is performing around a 3060 Ti in Tier 1 titles while oscillating between 220 and 250 watts of thermal board power. However, it seems to be closer to a 3060 in most titles, and he's really suspicious if this is how an A770 is performing in his hands right now how the A750 will actually end up as a 3060 competitor if you were to do, I don't know, like over 50 benchmarks like someone like Steve at Hardware Unboxed will do. And then a third source recently told me that the A750 and A770 samples are supposed to start arriving to reviewers by the end of this month, and that's still what he's hearing. Maybe they will. We're just going to have to see. So were I not to have access to tons of statements made publicly by Intel's AXG marketing team and their own numbers, well, from my own sources, I would just tell you that right now, it still kind of seems like nobody knows what's going on, the performance is all over the place, and nobody actually knows when it will be ready or if it will be ready anywhere near the performance Intel was hoping to hit about a year ago. But I think if we look into Intel's own numbers we can see the chaos in plain sight. Case in point, let's take a look at the A750 benchmark overview Intel put out there, basically claiming that the A750 was a 3060 competitor. All right, so let's see. Let's scroll down here, and yep, this looks like a pretty standard summary of benchmark numbers with Intel winning a bunch of them and NVIDIA winning some to try to make it look like this is a fair set of benchmarks. So wait for reviews to see if that's true. But one person on video cards noticed something very astutely, and it's that it seemed like Intel's DirectX 12 claims that DirectX 12 was what Alchemist was built for doesn't seem to hold any water. Indeed, if we look at the worst performers on Intel's own numbers, they are Dolmen, a DX12 game that launched May of this year, F1 2022, a DX12 game that launched July of this year and is actually the second game in a row from this team that only runs on DX12, and then Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a game that's indeed from November of 2020, but again, exclusively built for DX12. There's no claim you can make here that these games are actually DX11 games. These are DX12 first games, and one of them is actually the second generation of only being able to run on DX12. Now... Let's take a look at some of the best performers. Resident Evil 8, a DX12 game. Okay, so one of their best performers is actually a DX12 game as well. Tiny Tina. Well, this is actually a game, although it came out this year, that people say you should run in DX11 because it's using an old engine that really is not meant for DX12. Okay, so here we have one of Intel's best games is really a glorified DX11 game. And then Arcade Geddon, a DX12 game. All right, from July 2022. You guys see my point? If I take the three best and the three worst titles from Intel's own numbers, three of them are DX12 only, two of them some of the most recent games, and then their best performers, one of them really isn't a DirectX 12 game in reality. So that's not to say that I found proof that Alchemist performs horribly in DirectX 12 or performs better in DirectX 11. I'm just saying, if you look at the best and worst performers, there's no evidence that they're any better at programming DX 12 games than they are at programming DX 11 games. In fact, if we look at these numbers, there's some other oddities like the fact that why does F1 2022 seem to perform worse relatively than 2021. It's a more recent title. I thought Intel's architecture is built for more recent games. It doesn't seem to be what that suggests. What that seems to suggest is it takes them forever to optimize for a game, whether it's DX11 or DX12. And then there's Metro Exodus. Why not Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, a game that I've found, whether using Radeon or using Am uh, Ampere graphics, yeah, Ampere has a ray tracing performance advantage, but there's just less bugs. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition on PC, for my money, is just the version to play because it's so stable. Why would Intel not show that version here? Again, if they're claiming their architecture is meant for more recent versions of games. This isn't the most recent version. Although, to be fair, though, I guess Battlefield 2042 runs better than Battlefield 5, relatively speaking, you know, relative to the 3060. But again, so whatever. The newer F1 performs worse relative to the 3060 than the older F1. The newer Battlefield performs better relative to the older Battlefield. And then we have three... It just... There's no evidence any of these games are performing better because they're newer. 
Intel just seems to have optimization and performance, one or the other or both, that is all over the place. And although it is now public that Arc will be emulating DX9 from now on, so at the very least, we could maybe take them at their word to a degree that like these horrible Counter-Strike Global Offensive numbers we're seeing could be a result of DX9 and not perhaps more evidence that Intel's hardware scheduler is just CPU bottlenecked around 100 hertz, which I still think it might be. I, I think that we can say that there's a lot of evidence Tom Peterson and Ryan Shrout made up the DX12 defense. It's not to say that they won't have DX12 performance over time, perform better than 11 just because there's more DX12 titles now, and that's what they're focusing on, but at least... What I think we know is that Intel's driver team is just not very good at optimizing for DX12 or DX11. And so I kind of think they just made up that defense. And speaking of making up defenses on the spot, we need to talk about Tom and Ryan's appearance on The Full Nerd a month ago. I want to start by playing this clip here. And yeah. so we need to have a press strategy. We need to do samples worldwide. We need to do engagement and then work through all the issues. Because you know when you launch a new GPU, there's going to be stuff that goes on. In this case, I would say another big thing that we didn't do since we weren't engaged with these global press, like some guys in Germany, some guys here in the U.S., they didn't know about this whole rebar thing. Mm. Right. And so I've been out talking about people. We have a unique graphics memory controller that has some unusual like behaviors. It's designed for working with more modern platforms. And there's a feature in almost every BIOS that's called resizable bar. It's, it, you know, I think what did AMD call it? Like smart, Sam, smart memory, smart access. memory access yeah. and NVIDIA. I think they call it just smart resizable access, yeah, bar. Right. yeah. But you got to turn it on for arc because our our memory controller is designed to work with that active. How many of you immediately see the problem with this claim here? Intel is claiming they built a memory controller from the ground up to use smart access memory from AMD. I have the full specs of the top Alchemist die two years ago, one year before AMD even unveiled smart access memory. This, to me, screams a defense that was made up on the spot. Uh, it, our drivers seem to be garbage without re resizable bar. Uh, say it's a modern architecture that was designed for this. Despite the fact that Intel was still rolling out resizable bar support on Intel motherboards after I had already leaked pictures of Alchemist samples and had already received early 3D Mark benchmark information for some of those samples that would have assuredly not been running drivers with resizable bar support. They would have had to have added that last minute. And sure, maybe it is necessary to get reasonable performance, but that's it. Their architecture just requires it. It was not designed for it. It's a crutch. That's something I would have expected from someone like Ryan Shrout, but Tom Peterson, he comes from NVIDIA. He knows better than this. He knows this is bullshit. He knows you don't design an entire memory controller in one year. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And anyone who would say that, you know, they'd believe them over me, it's like, well, then what you're basically suggesting is I just guessed top alchemist specs a year before Smart Access memory. That's just a coincidence. It's not. The overall design for these types of graphics cards is locked in two to three years before they come out overall. I mean, heck, Alchemist doesn't even natively support HDMI 2.1. This is not some cutting-edge architecture. This is a 2020 architecture that's two years late. And what I think we're seeing is just it uses smart access memory or resizable bar like a crutch. And then they just said, oh, it's a modern architecture. And just like their DX12 defense, this was something they made up on the spot. And it really insults me that this keeps happening. If you don't know what to say... Just don't say anything, and you'll avoid moments like this. So at the end of the day, I would say both sooner than you expect and not uh, not that far away from my perspective. That's such a weird statement to say sooner than you'd expect. And now here we are a month after this, and I would have expected within a month. I mean, if NVIDIA went around holding an RTX 4090 and said it's launching soon, and then a month later we still didn't have a release date, would that feel like it's coming soon relative to that statement? The reason Tom says these things, 
re- it was built for resizable bar, even though we know it couldn't have been, or DX12 optimization, even though there's no evidence DX12 optimization. It's because he's making it up as he goes, and I think Intel take this marketing team and shut them up until you actually know what's going on, because they're saying things. Well. They're saying a quote that I want to close on today. Independent of that, we're also making driver changes to catch yes. up to performance on DX11 and DX9. And that stuff is all going to happen on Alchemist before Battle Mage. Right? Yep. So, so don't think of it as... Yep. You don't have to wait till Battle Mage yeah. to get the improvements on Alchemist. Yes. You will see those iterations occur yeah. as our software and driver roadmap. Yeah. Without forward. committing to anything specific, we do realize that DX11 and DX9 are very important to our customer base. We're going to be working on that urgently. I, I, okay. I, I, I really, You know what I've learned is that every time we say something, people remember what we say. Okay. Just you know, it's a classic. It, if aliens land tomorrow, like, oh, yes, well, we're yes. not going to deliver because yes. we're. I, I, working although in I the would spice say lines. it would be kind of stupid if Ryan and I. I mean, we do stupid things all the time. Sure. But this would be exceptionally stupid for us to go around talking to key press and technical people if we're like in the distant future, right? That would be shockingly stupid. I agree. It would be shockingly stupid if you did that.